Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. One of my favorite episodes every month is where to start. But first, we are going to feed Boomer and Sooner here. And let me tell you guys, I always thought, I've got a Kentucky and I've got a largemouth. I always thought the Kentucky would be more aggressive. This largemouth has got, he's Boomer, he's Sooner. He's got Sooner down in that corner over the last month and does not let him out of there. So it's, it's always a challenge to get him fed. I have to bring the largemouth over here and uh, drop a minnow down over there to uh, Sooner to get him one. So we're gonna get started here and watch this. He will come plumb out of the water to get it. It's just, I mean, he come all the way out. It's just amazing. I threw one over in that corner, but it's not coming down. Let's see here. Let's try another one. I'm gonna throw this big one down there. There you go, buddy. He get it? Yep, he got it. Did he get that one? No, they're up in the weeds. He needs to get one. Here you go, dude. Come back over here. He got that one. Oh, you missed it. It's right here behind you. Look. Got two left. Oh, they're all up in there. All right, dude, come here. Where you at? Easy. Did he get it? Man, I Oh, he got one of them down there. All right, that's it. I try to feed them every few days. I enjoy it. Man, it's crazy sitting here in TV, like sitting here watching TV. You'll look over here and they're just like completely thrashing each other, th chasing them around the tank. And, and this largemouth here obviously is way more aggressive than that spotted bass in this tank. I don't know why. And he's outgrowing that spotted bass too. Like he's starting to get a lot bigger over that one, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. All right, let's get to the lakes. Let's uh, let's start talking some fishing. Where to start? All right, so where to start for the month of December? You know, one of the great things about these videos, you know, Optima stepped up big. We're giving a battery away each month, and with that said, let's give the battery away. I've got randomly. We picked the winner, and the winner is. His comment was, awesome video. Thanks for taking the time it takes to make these videos. They are very helpful. Kind words. Bobby Tyson, send me an email through my website. I will send you a certificate for a battery. And with that said, you know, it's, where it's cold, it's a time of year. Make sure your wife's got a good car battery in her car. You don't want her at the mall, Christmas shopping, and that thing clicking. So it's time of year to make sure you got good batteries with the weather being colder. You know, Optima's got a lot of good ones to choose from and uh, appreciate you supporting the companies that support me and support you guys on this awesome channel. So with that said, where to start? I got three lakes that you guys sent in. We're gonna talk about, let me go to my notes here. Cody Boyd sent in Lake Granberry. Hunter Starn sent in Ross Barnett. And then the final one was by Brian Smith. I'll keep it a secret to, to, till the end. So you guys gotta watch this video for a little bit. We'll do that one final, the final one. So let's go, let's go to Lake Granberry right there in Texas. What a neat lake. Okay, so here you go. You've got Lake Granberry. It's just west of Fort Worth, Texas. It's on the Brazos River, a uh, long river run lake. Uh, I actually fished it one time, probably 20 something years ago, me and Matt Reed fished a, a Angler's Choice Team Championship there. We did really well. We didn't, I don't think we, well, I don't even want to be that way. We were really close to winning. Uh, I think we might've won a boat. I don't know, we were close. We did really, really good a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, and it was this time of the year. So let's just start right there. Like one of the spots that I would start on Lake Grammar. Let's back up. This is the C-Map. I have a lot of people asking what the C-Map is. It's a, it's a mapping company that's just very, very detailed. Um, you know, there's, there's two or three different mapping companies out there. They're all good. This is the one that I use that I like a lot. I like the shading. I can change the shades to whatever I'm trying to, uh, to get to, but really neat mapping company. But, but back to Lake Granbury. Brazos River, long, narrow run lake, pretty deep, pretty clean water. Uh, in that event that me and Matt fished, we were up in the river. We were at the mouth of this river where it dumps in lots of logs, lots of laydowns, throwing, you know, square bill crankbaits, little crankbaits, making multiple, multiple casts on those logs. Perfect time of the year to go up here and fish this. I mean, just a perfect, perfect time of the year. Let's look at it over here on my laptop. 
and see what it looks like here when we look on the laptop. You know, one of the reasons I start there, it's gonna be where the water mixes. Anytime you have a body of water, wherever you're at guys, where the water mixes. And what I mean by that, where the stained water meets the clean water, there's always a mile to five or 10 mile stretch in any given lake where that water mixes. And it's not the dirtiest yet, it's not the cleanest. That's always a great place to start no matter what time of the year. Well, that's what happens right here at Granberry. You got this river here that dumps out onto this flat, all kinds of lay downs down through here. If we were to go back in time and just check some photos, let's start about right there. So there's a low water photo. My internet in Oklahoma at times can be slow. There it goes, it just got clear. Okay, so you can see this photo is super low. This was from 2015, but you just got logs anywhere like this is gonna be a big log, shallow flat when I fill that lake up. You know, now you, you can just see the lake's full. You're gonna have logs all the way across there. Some of them you're gonna see, some of the best logs are gonna be the ones you can't see that you find with your depth finder or you accidentally hit with your trolling motor. Um, you know, cause those logs don't get fished every day. You can kind of see some of them right there as I zoom in in this photo. That's the kind of stuff I'm fishing, you know, and you can see the little deep drains coming around them. You know, that's a, the tip of one, the tip of one. Those are gonna be the spots that I would, a definite place to start, you know, in the month of uh, December, you know, there's just gonna be fish up there. Now, as it gets colder, as the water gets colder in December, uh, you know, we've had a really warm December so far. Uh, move on down that lake, fish the mouths of some of these pockets, some of these bluff ends. There's gonna be a couple places these fish are gonna be down the lake. They're either gonna be all the way in the backs of some of these pockets, or they're gonna be out at the mouth. You know, you just, like if, if I were to go there, I'd pick a pocket that's fairly predominant. Let me just find one and pick it. I like the looks of this one. I got lots of channel swings in it, uh, lots of variety in it. I could start right here, fish around the, the tip of this. I've got a channel swing to, to fish, a point, and then just determine, I could fish that fairly quick from right there all the way to back there. I'm gonna fish boat docks points, rock changes, and I could hopefully get a bite or two somewhere between here and the mouth to determine a pattern. Um, that's, that's how I'd start it. That's how I'd fish it. Uh, I feel like they're gonna be somewhere, depending on your water temperature, there's, there's gonna be fish in the backs. They've been there, you know, all fall. There's, it's not been cold enough yet to run them out. But then, you know, as they, as they get more active out deeper, as that water cools off, you know, those shad might start moving out. That's a very small pocket that you can fish quickly to determine that pattern. So we've got the places to start here on Granberry now, but you know, when I think about some of those baits that I talked about in last week's video of, of, of baits to throw in December, you know, we talked about the swim bait and the Alabama rig, you know, that's gonna be a, a, a bait you're gonna throw out here towards more towards the mouth, these bluff ends around those ends of those docks. You know, that flat sided crankbait, that's gonna be like a bait you could throw, you know, as you're moving back into those transition, those rock transition areas. That jig that we talked about, that's gonna be something you can flip around these docks, flipping the back end of that pocket, or maybe flipping that upper end on those laydowns. You know, other baits that I throw up on those laydowns obviously would be a spinner bait and a square bill. Some of those baits that we may have mentioned in the November video, uh, some of that stuff. So, all right, that's Lake Granberry in a nutshell. I know it's quick, but there's not a lot to that lake. You know, looking at it, you know, some of those canals, man, I, I've done really good in Texas. Uh, late in the year in these canals, you know, just, find one the winds really piping down that's got you know shad hemmed up in the back of them you know canal like this would be good that's got a turn in it uh, this one's got a little basin in the back of it i like stuff like that too because the playing field's not real big it's it's a condensed area they can hem those shad up in the back can be really really good so moving on to the next lake that we got from one of our viewers was hunter hunter starnes from and he said ross barnett let's look at ross barnett another great lake just north and east of jackson mississippi all right let's see how quick i can find it that's toledo rayburn there's jackson right there cool lake you know just a little bit of background for the people that don't know much about the ross barnett you know it's a fairly dirty lake i'd say year round it's got lots of lily pads lots of flats lots of standing timber it's a brutal lake on a boat you know if you get out of those boat lanes uh, but when i look at this lake and i just look at, at at high percentage spots thinking about december of and remember this video is called where to start where to start there's no better place to start than this riprap right here on the upper end of that lake year round and especially in December, those fish can 
pull up shallow to feed on that riprap, pull off deeper. When they don't want to feed, you got a couple key components here. You got some road beds that go underneath it. You got another road bed here. You know, I don't think that's going to be a big player. You know, obviously up here shallow it would be. This spot right here, that would be a big player. Um, pipeline road beds going across it. You know, this one's probably going to be a little deep for Ross Barnett, but great, great, great place in my opinion where to start on Ross Barnett. Another thing. You know, when, I, when we always talk about places where to start in a lake, I've always said in all my videos, the biggest flats house the most amount of fish. When you look at Ross Barnett and you look at the colors of the sea map, well, you can see this yellow here is a big flat. You know, that's all less than seven feet of water. You got a big drain coming in, houses lots of fish, big spawning grounds, huge spawning grounds. Same thing over here, all these backwater pockets big spawning grounds, thus the biggest population of fish versus let's say this whole shoreline here, it's deep. Yes, fish spawn there, fish live there, but as far as numbers of fish, I'm trying to put you guys in an area that is the highest percentage of fish per acre, it's going to be a lot higher on this side of the lake than it would be on this side of the lake. Now, with that said, cold water coming January, February, things can get tougher. They're, they have to move a lot further to find maybe more of their comfort zone. But with the weather that we're having this December, things being warm, man, these fish are still going to be feeding actively all on these flats, you know, fishing those lily pads, those lily pad stems, spinner baits. I mean, I, I would have to think you could still catch them on a frog, uh, you know, if that water's in the upper 50s. So um, those would be some places I'd start. That bridge, the river, you know, what you guys watching the channel, you can always, when all else things fail, you run up a river, no matter what time of the year it is, but especially this time of year could be really good. And then these flats down through here, you know, if I was to pick one, let's just say pick one. Why not pick one that's got a road bed leading into it? Like you got a road coming in there, you got one going across there, just a cool spot. Like anything, anything that I can add to a spot, then like, you know, this one, this bay here doesn't have a road going into it. You know, there's obviously a road there, but it's just another natural highway, another adding add, a beneficial attractor to help keep fish in that area, let them travel back and forth. Right here, you got a road, comes all the way in. That'd be a great point to start right there, in my opinion. Here, you got a pipeline coming in. Another great spot to start, in my opinion. So there's a few areas on Ross Barnett that I would start. Yeah, that's just where I'd start. Now, things turn and get colder and, and uh, you know, things are a little more brutal. You can never go wrong in December fishing riprap, you know, on that dam. There's gonna be fish on that dam year round. They, they don't travel a long ways. You know, you got deep water really close with shallow water close by, wind. The cleanest water is gonna be down here and in this Tallahatchie Bay. So, you know, maybe if you got the whole lake's muddy up there, you know, cold water, muddy water does not mix. If you had that scenario, it's, it's been a pretty good drought here around my house. I'm not sure over in December, but if that's the case, I need to find cleaner water. That's going to be down the lake, maybe back in this Pelahatchie Bay, along the dam, along this riprap here, uh, something like that. So keep those things in mind when you're out there looking for a place to start. The final lake, a super cool lake, a lake that's not very far from my house, Fort Gibson Lake. Brian Smith sent it in. Just a little bit of background about Fort Gibson Lake. It's uh, on the Grand River. It is, uh, uh, there's Grand Lake, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, where Redcrest is going to be. Then you've got uh, Hudson Lake, just a, a river run lake that I compare a lot to uh, like Kentucky Lake. And then you got Fort Gibson. The biggest difference in my mind between like Fort Gibson, 20 something thousand acre lake and Grand, obviously the size is bigger, but Fort Gibson's flat, like flat, flat, flat. So you got to keep that in mind when you're picking spots to start, especially as you get into the winter. Um, you know, it, I, I like to find more vertical stuff, you know, and especially when it's uh, not a lot of it on a lake. So, okay, so when I look at Fort Gibson Lake, you know, just a great lake, you know, you got the river coming in up here. Great spot to start. You cannot go wrong starting in the river at Fort Gibson. Pay attention to how much water's coming to, through the lake. Uh, you know, there's some islands in it, some flats, some creeks coming in. That kind of stuff can be deadly on that lake. I mean, deadly, especially this time of year. Uh, you know, as warm as things have been. Now, moving down the lake a little bit, uh, you know, any of, these, any of these big major creeks, you know, the further back those creeks, like this Flat Rock Creek, 
you're gonna catch fish back there, I promise you, this time of the year. But then as it gets colder, I'm gonna transition out to some of these little bit steeper banks, some of these rock banks, these channel swings. You can see, you got a really good channel swing right there. You got another one, you got another one right in there. That's the one I was looking for. Um, that's the kind of stuff I wanna look for. If you wanna be more main lake oriented, you know, and let's say things are dirty, we had some rain that we hadn't had yet, but come down here to 14 Mile Creek because it's a very, very diverse creek, a little bit deeper than everything else. You've got all kinds of boat docks in this creek on this bank right here. You know, boat docks, like I said, is always a great place to start because, you know, a fish can live on a boat dock. They can be comfortable out on the end of it being in deeper water. They can spawn up underneath the walkway. Always a great place to start. I just, it, it is. You know, looking in the back of this pocket, you know, you've got a road bed that crosses this pocket. You got some, some fish attractors. You got flooded timber. Uh, kind of a neat spot back here that, you know, just goes really deep to shallow in a hurry. It's gonna be a spot those, those shad are gonna congregate right in the back of that pocket. Would be a great place to start also if, if you know, the water's clean and, and fish are doing that. Same thing here, you got a really neat pinch point. Deep water goes up into a shallow flat. We've talked about that a bunch in our Where to Start videos, you know, last month in this fall, looking for those spots where that water really transitions from deep to shallow. Those fish can move back and forth and be in their comfort zone depending on what kind of weather you're having, you know, whether it gets really cold or, or things warm up, they can pop up there really quick. You know, this creek back here, you can't really get into it. It's pretty shallow at times. You can get in there when the water's a little higher, uh, pretty tricky to get into, but you got some old road beds. There's lots of culverts, you know, down through here that, that you know, I just, I look for high percentage spots. I know there's quite a bit of brush on a lot of these points, you know, around here, fish are relating to brush. Another great place to start. Uh, you know, let the water color, let the uh, water temperature dictate what baits you're gonna use. Um, you know, as things get colder, then transition a little bit more to those steeper banks around those boat docks. Some of these deeper points would be what I'm doing. If the water's really warm, uh, then you can fish some of that flatter stuff, some of that brush off some of those points through there. But, man, that's where I would start on those three lakes, guys. I appreciate you guys sending in your comments. That's how you win a battery. Just leave me a comment. Uh, like the video, that helps me a bunch. And then I just randomly go through there and somebody's gonna win an optimum battery. And I hope it goes to somebody that needs one. Uh, it's that time of year that we all need batteries. I do wanna remind everybody, man, if, if you haven't tried pecans, man, I, I don't wanna like push these things on you. You can see my bag's half eight. I, I go through a lot of them. That's honey roasted, one of my favorites. Got milk chocolate, I've got jalapenos, another favorite. And then I got fresh pecans here. It's a great time of the year to make pecan pies. We make little mini pecan pies. We got a recipe right here on this bag. But uh, man, if you hadn't tried them, give them a try. I'm really proud of them. You guys tune in next week. We'll be doing it all over again. Leave me some comments of any of the, uh, any content you wanna see coming up in the future. Uh, I will go through there and get them all read. And I uh, appreciate the support. Hope everybody's having a great holiday season.